Welcome. In this video, I'm going to show you the, the Configuration Manager Client Health reports. These reports are um, what you would need to report on the data that is collected by the Configuration Manager Client Health script. Let's get started. So in this video, I'm going to cover off a couple of things. I am going to talk about the uh, Power BI reports, whether those are Power BI report server, Power BI desktop. I'm also going to talk about um, SSRS. And when I'm talking about SSRS, the RDLs that you have for SSRS will 100% apply to Power BI report server. So I'll be using the terms interchangeably, unfortunately, but when I'm talking about um, uh, RDLs, uh, SSRS, or paginated reports, they apply to both Power BI report server and SQL server reporting server. If you have any questions, let me know. So just as a reminder, all of these reports do assume that your uh, configuration manager client health database is co-located with your um, configuration manager database. More on that um, in the future. So I said it's going to start off with Power BI. So let's start off with Power BI. In front of you is a Power BI report server and I'll show off the desktop in a minute. But let's go and run this um, Configuration Manager Health Dashboard. So what this is doing is querying the database right now for all the details and returning it off. So we're going to start off at device source. So device source, this is telling you where the data is um, coming from, uh, meaning if it is um, Configuration Manager only, it means the device only exists in Configuration Manager. Um, if it's in Health only, it means that it's in the Configuration Manager Client Health Database and nothing else. And if it's in both, this is ideally where you want everything to be. It's both in Configuration Manager Database and in the Client Health. So you're seeing the results of uh, both devices. What's really nice is you can right click on any of the pie wedges and drill through to the client details. This is going to be the final stop on all report sets to show you which computers comprise that. So that was for the client health. We're going to again drill through and show uh, for the both scenarios. And you can also notice that this will scroll to the right. It's got more details on this um, for, your, for your environment. So the next one on there is the client checks. So the client checks, what you can see on this is, all, these are all the client checks that the, configure, the, the configuration client health script does. And you can see their various statuses, again, if I pick any of these, right click, it will allow me to drill through to the details. And again, I can see which computers comprise up that um, details. We have the hardware tab. And again, if you remember the client, uh, the script, it will collect, um, make and manufacture of that machine of all the machines in here. So I can actually drill through on the um, list and it will show me the different uh, machines within my uh, environment for that. So that was hardware. Again, we can go into OS. OS is the same thing. You've got the operating system, build, patch level, and architecture. And again, you can drill down from it to the details. The script, so the script um, tells you about the PowerShell version that's running the script, uh, the build of the PowerShell, and then it's also telling you the uh, version of the uh, script in here. And you can see at, the, at this current time, I have two different versions of the client health script. 
um, running. So more to come on that in uh, the very near future. And of course, I've shown you off the details. So uh, this is the final uh, report for all of the report sets in this. In just a second, I'm going to show you how to uh, access this uh, same Power BI report, but uh, using Power BI Desktop in just a second. So we're here on my desktop, and I'm going to go uh, Power BI. And I want you to notice I actually have three different versions of Power BI on uh, desktop. The top one that's listed is the report server version. The second one is Power BI Desktop. And the report builder is their new um, report builder that you use for building uh, paginated reports. We're going to use the desktop, which most of you guys will have. So we're just going to launch it. And we're going to say cancel that. And then we're going to tell it to open up a report. Now, I just did this, but normally you would just go open up another report and grab the report. Now, it's coming up with an error message for me, or warning message, really, that says that uh, I'm using a newer version of Report Desktop, which is fine. So I'm just going to close that. And we can see our report has come up. It's and we can turn around and do the exact same things that we just did on the uh, other one. So we can right click and drill down to the details and get the details. We can get, um, look at all their script checks in here, everything. It's exactly the same. This thing functions the same way as it does on the report server. It just uses the Power BI desktop. Um, remember that this is using um, the direct query. So this is a, a direct query in the background. So what that means is that it's um, querying the data live versus uh, caching the uh, data. Next up, I'm going to show you uh, the SSRS reports. So we're back on our uh, Power BI reporting point. And if you remember, I said that the re SSRS reports will fully function on um, Power BI. And we can see that they're flagged as paginated reports, which is um, always quite amusing to myself. So we're gonna run this uh, dashboard. And we can see we've got the uh, results in here. What I've ended up doing is combining two um, into the whole set. So I can go off and say both. And this is going to drill down to the um, list of devices by client health state. Um, we can see that, that what's listed there. Additionally, there's some, some prompts in here. So if I wanted to say, uh, I want to see um, only the ones that exist in the, the health and those that exist in configuration manager only i can do that and you can see that the status is color coded on them i can further drill through on that and go to the uh, the details for this particular device this again is all of the details that um, Did I click? Let's click on Okay, apparently I didn't click on them. Um, all of the uh, details that um, the client health script collects about the devices. So I put this in uh, here. Again, this is a um, uh, uh, the final uh, report for all these things. In a nutshell, that is the uh, SSRS uh, reports, uh, honestly. What I would encourage you, if you have any comments or suggestions on how to improve these reports, 
please let me know. You can do it through the uh, Git page or you can contact me here. Let me show you the execution account um, issue. So I've already enabled um, remote errors. I'm gonna pick any of the reports. It doesn't matter which one of the reports I pick. I'm going to let it run. And we can see really quickly that the account mem uh, SSRS2 does not have access to the database. So if you go back to the blog post and look for the code for that, you'll find there's this little code in here. And literally, if you just click replace your account in here, uh, in, in all the spots associated with this thing, and then just run it and you're done. This will create a this will create a uh, security user. Now this assumes the account uh, does exist within the overall uh, SS, uh, SQL instance, but it should. So now if I just refresh this report, everything works great. The reason why it's doing this is we're bouncing through the Configuration Manager database to the um, uh, Configuration Manager Health database, and we have to assure that it has rights. If you were doing this in Configuration Manager itself, it already has rights. So, if you have any questions about that, feel free to reach out. With that, I'd like to thank you for watching this video and to remind you that if you like this content, to like the um, to like it and to subscribe to the channel. Additionally, I would encourage you to go off to the Ask Garth site and subscribe off to the newsletter. This way you can be informed of the latest content as it goes live. Until next time.